you have the power to confront the attackers attackers have no power because christ in you the hope of glory Amen. i said when christ is in you there is what hope say there is hope there is hope well if you have christ who is these attackers who is these enemies bible says my enemies do not rejoice over me I, when I fall, I shall rise up again. So there is possibility that even if you have fall, you will still what rise up. See rising. Kadabasa. Ikolabasataya. There is possibility that you rise up. I see people rising this year. You are not here with me. It, it looks like you are exempted. I said, I see people rising, rising. You are rising from the lowest state to the higher state of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. What is power? You can write it. Power to achieve applying law's inherent ability. What is power? Power is to what? Achieve the Lord inherent ability. Inherit means to a taking over of the very person who was living. Amen. Talking about power, it is inherent. Say inherent. Inherent means it is already embedded in you. You have the power in you. You did not inherit it. It is not what inherit. You did not inherit the power. Nobody left it for you. You were born with it. At the moment you receive Christ as your personal savior, the power comes automatically so a child of god have power in you bible says out of our belly flows rivers of living waters amen in other words there is inner power that gives the authorization for the gods in the spirit to react that is why a child of God must not even voice a word or negative word because whatever comes out of you must work. So the power of God is inside you. Amen. Amen. And you need to know that because we're a child of God. And a child of God must inhibit those characters. You don't have to, you know, allow the enemy to subdue you. <laughs> Because out of your belly flows rivers. In other words, there is a Holy Ghost reservoir in you. You are not here with me. I said, there is one Holy Ghost what reservoir. Say reservoir. There is a reservoir in your system. There is a connectivity in the spirit. You walk like a being by your spirit. I said, I said, you walk as a flesh, but in the spirit, you you are not you are not as a human you are a spirit Hallelujah. you walk you talk like a spirit in fact the bible says in the book of psalm i love this scripture verse 8 to 4 say what is man Hallelujah. what is man that you are mindful of him Hallelujah. in other words there is something about man that you can't understand you cannot apprehend or comprehend with your understanding yes. a man carries certain spirit that no demon can confront. You are not here. I, I, I love that. Amen. Demons have no power over you because there is something in you. There is a reservoir. Say reservoir. reservoir. That is why when I fall, I know rising part of it is my portion. Because I will not give up for the enemy to have me. It's all about your mental faculty. How you think. I will say let the mind that is in Jesus be in you. In other words, you must have Christ-like attitudes. Have a Christ-like. Give yourself a state as a Christ. Make yourself known as you are a bona fide child of God. There is power in you. And what is power in the Hebrew? It's what? Dunamis. And dunamis means dynamite. Dynamite means you have something in you that, in fact, can bust out the devil. Uh, you, you, know, you, are, you are a very dangerous person. 
say you are a very dangerous person when you confront the enemy the enemy don't have any access on you say hi calabosa i said the enemy don't have any access on you unless you give way the power has been embedded in us for god's glory to be seen in our lives tell someone that i have power so the first thing i said what i said power is what inherent it's not inherit we did not inherited power we have it in us and we don't have to be in white house before we become powerful uh, we are in our own white house already uh -huh. uh, you are not here with me i said we have christ in us christ have a white house and we are partakers of godly divine jesus christ in the book of Acts, chapter number one verse eight you can project it for me please i want to take it very quietly and nice today but you shall what receive what when the holy spirit is what come upon you and you shall be mine but in what jerusalem any what judea and samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the so when the holy ghost come upon you you shall become a witness say witness witness me now you have a license to go out there to prove the god that you serve you have the license you have been licensed by the holy spirit now you can go out to witness the goodness of god and the witness that he's talking about here is not just going to proclaim the goodness of god alone but you have to let your life star shine out there you know i cannot preach the gospel without an evidence I cannot preach the gospel without an evidence. The evidence must show that I serve the living God. The evidence must show that I serve the living God. When the evidence shows out there, you don't struggle to win a soul. What makes people to love you is about what you carry. So if you don't have anything in you, no one have right to accept you. He said that you shall what? receive power when the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witness both in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth in other words you shall receive the holy spirit and the holy ghost is already in you you shall be a witness in other words you cannot go and preach to obama if you are not in the level of obama people normally witness to only poor people and the thing that when you preach to the poor people that is what will make you to go to heaven it is impossible i will say the poor shall be with you always and you cannot eradicate poverty poverty cannot be eradicated in other words all of them are called but what we have to do is to what confront those who have been convinced by the devil to know christ and those who are above there are those who think that they are in that level where they cannot accept anything we have to let our lifestyle change them hey, you cannot confront a businessman who is a guru without wearing tie and suit oh, no, you are not here with me yes. you know we try to limit our our ways of living christians think that we are so limited let me tell you we are not limited we are not limited dress well make sure that yourself is well ordered at time confront those that you cannot confront and tell them your god and for them to accept your god they have to look from the top of you to the down why this man dress why this man put on nice things why led life is short exercise power before you get to know someone has come to take over and it could be even a friend who hates you in the family who will come and take over and spend all your money no, in fact he will not even spend the money he will squander the money people normally just want to save i'm not saying don't save save but make sure you are eating some you can only walk 
in the dunamis, which is the power, when you have what? Experience the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the power. And thank God for the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Ghost in you, yeah, you don't struggle. All things become simple, nice, and very easy for you. When you know the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, you don't struggle. Who is the Holy Spirit? You can write it. Who is the Holy Spirit? John chapter 14, verse number 26. He says that, but the helper, so the Holy Ghost, what is the helper? John chapter what? 14, verse 26. And he says, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, oh my goodness, let's all read together. But one go, but the comforter, even the what? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, all things, all things, and bring all things to your what remembrance whatsoever. So the Holy Ghost sit in you, or embedded in you, is a reservoir. The Holy Ghost brings into your what into your remembrance everything that comes out of you. That's why you must think positive, because Holy Ghost don't think negative. <laughs> Anything negative is not of God. In other words, what confront the attacker is your positive thinking. You don't think pessimistic, but you think optimistic. Optimistic ideas always conquer pessimist. Speak the very thing that is not exist as though it is there. That's faith. What is faith? It is the most potent force of the universe. What is faith? Faith is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, you must hear the voice of Elohim to make decisions in your life. Amen. For Jesus Christ. <laughs> People just take steps without consulting the Holy Spirit. You know, when you think as Christ thinks, you don't fail. Hallelujah. You know, people think that it's only grace that, you know, um, a man needs to, to live on earth here. Which is true. The grace of God is about and is forever. As our spiritual father came here and said, Grace help you to shun away from sin. Grace don't give you certificate to sin. There are seven thinking ideas that you have, which is not godly idea. It is demonic idea. Death and life lies the power of thought. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, there is something we call death. And there's something we call life. It is how you reason and how you utter it that gives you the access to achieve greatness in life. But it, when you have power, does not, does not mean you have the audacity to win on earth here. You may have the power without any functions. You speak like God. You talk like God. And that will make you different. And the difference it will make is to attract enemies to you. Because the way you think is not how a carnal person thinks. You speak like God. You don't see the thing, but you can really send that something yeah. is in the pipeline coming. Yeah. You speak like him. God speaks life. He don't speak death. Ah, speak life to yourself. I shall be the next president in Ghana. Speak it. Say it. Ah, I 
I shall be the next president in Liberia. Say it. At times, look, look at yourself in the mirror and begin to confront the devil. The devil, you have no way to overcome me. Out of my belly flows rivers of living water. And he said, he said his word, that who is he that speaks a thing? That it comes to pass when God has not commanded it. So, enemy have no legal right. Kuda Baba Satan. Uh, you are not here with me. I said, the enemy have no legal my brother Emily, I said the enemy have no legal right to overcome you, my brother. Because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Listen, if you are walking in America, walk with your heads up and forget the issues you are facing. The Bible says, cast your burden onto Jesus. In the other words, you don't have to even think about it. Cast it out. My God, my God, I can't pay my bills. Oh, this, 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 this country is not accepting me. They will accept you when you speak. Yeah. In fact, I was saying this thing to Houston people, one of my friends, church. I said, we cannot identify the Garden of Eden. And I asked myself, where is the Garden of Eden? If you look at it, it is the presence of God. Yeah. So when man fell, the Lord took his presence and deposited his presence in man. You know, that's why the angels came and shut the gate of the garden. In other words, we closed this area this time because sin is rampant here. So when God was creating man, after man sinned, he said, let me bring the garden in the life of man. Men have certain presence. That's why you carry Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost that we talk about here, he is powerful. When creation was made, it took the Holy Ghost to move upon the waters and to move upon the atmosphere. In other words, the earth was without form. So what really brings order to the world or to the creation yeah. is the Holy Spirit. So when you have the Holy Ghost in you, it is not there to say things that is not supposed to be. If the creation needs the spirit of God to over to bring order, then you have the Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Your belly carries Holy Ghost. Kalada Basataya. Ilikidias. Meaning he is in oh my goodness. He's embedded in you. Yes. So why are you not making use of the Holy Spirit? So the garden of Eden that we don't see is in man. Yes. It's the presence of God. Hallelujah. You carry presence. You carry. You carry God. Hallelujah. Without you singing, God won't come here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> in fact, God needs you to come here. God needs your license to come here. Yes. The earth was not made for spirit. He needed man yeah, yeah, yeah. to manifest. You don't know what you carry, Jesus Christ. If you know what you carry, eh? when you are walking in Maryland, you walk, people think that you know I have to move from Maryland to a place where I can pay my rent. Dine with the kings. Dine who can pay the price. Don't tell me I have to leave that place and be in a place where I can afford. For your information, the system in that particular city, your pay rate. Will be low. So, so, so it is the same. The system is the same. It is the mindset of the people. People magnify the devil. They magnify the problem. They magnify the issue. They magnify what they are going through. You don't magnify the issue. So the garden of Eden is in you. Say it's in me. Ah, you know how the Bible says death and life. That he brought to man, tongue, and said, man, you have the dead and life. In other words, the tree in the garden of Eden has now come into your tongue. Now your tongue is a tree. Hallelujah. Be careful. Hallelujah. The tongue you carry is the tree. That Eve discovered the devil on top. 
This is the tree. And you know how God it is. Have you seen your teeth? That God the fence. It's your teeth. Look at your teeth. Like a fence. That guards the tree of good and what? Evil. Which is your tongue. The water that waters the garden, the Tigris and Euphrates and Nile, the waters is in your tongue. The water, the tree, which is the tongue. Where is this waters coming from? The saliva that waters your tongue, where is it coming from? Out of your belly flows rivers of living waters. The Holy Ghost is watering the tongue for you to speak a word that is from him. Not the word of evil. My goodness. Paul and Silas demonstrated the power in the prison. Just imagine two people have been captured and they were in the prison. One song, one song, one praise shook the whole prison. Just one song ago, we are all singing. Let them know that the Holy Ghost is in the presence. The whole prison was shaken. Their chains were being removed. It's causing their chain to be broken. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say, break every chain. It breaks every chain. The chains of defeat. The chains of, you know, all kinds of chains can be broken based on the way you relate to God. Relationship in the things of God gives you the access to your victory. How you relate to God. How you have access with God. You know, people think that you can just be far from God and still benefit. So the book of Acts 16, verse number 25 to 27, it talks about it. The whole place was shaken. The blind man begged at the gate. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. He says clearly that this blind man was sitting at the beautiful gate. Beautiful. Say beautiful. But he was blind. Listen, not time people are blind though. They come to church but they are blind. You know, they don't come to prayer meetings. What energize, what revive the Holy Spirit is your prayer. Yes. So people have the Holy Ghost in them. But the Holy Ghost is dead. Yes. When you don't exercise it, when you don't pray, when you don't bring it to an action, manifest, declare, utterances, say some things, proclaim God, it sits there and it doesn't manifest. The blind man sat there for years, but he couldn't see. He couldn't see. And he was just begging. People are just begging while their miracles is around them. Their miracle is just around them. But they cannot maximize it. They can't see it. They can't focus to get it. It's more like my issue. What I'm going through. You know, they think about the blind things than what is ahead of them. The man was asking Peter and John, give me money. <laughs> Do you know what John said? He says, silver and gold. Mm. You know, let me bring this one in. It's not part of my sermon. Let me bring it in. You bless the blessed in order to receive the blessing of the blessed. Amen. You don't bless the poor to get a blessing of the poor. The poor the Bible describes here are those who are poor in the spirit. People normally carry jeans and stuff to Africa to bless those who are poor. They carry food, which is okay, you are doing well. But that will not solve the issue. And I said, that is not how you can eradicate poverty. That is why Peter and John said, we have no gold neither silver he described what the bible says over here he said that blessed are those who are poor in the spirit not in the canal 
if I want to change a poor man's life, I got to teach the person how I became rich. You are not here with me. I got to show him how I became rich. And how I became rich, I have to take him to school. I have to teach him some things. That's why the disciples said, we don't have nothing for you this time. You have been here begging and you cannot focus to see ahead of you. I dare you. I don't have as such as I have. The knowledge I have. The power invested in me. Rise up and walk. See. They exchange it with miracle. You need to have access by utilizing the power of God in murdering you. You can. Say, I can. So, your marriage, your business, riches, glory, destiny, dreams, achievement, finance, promotions, you know, academic excellence, dominion, all is embedded in you. First Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 11. He says, but God has what? Had revealed them unto us by his word, his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. He searched all things. He speaks all things. Amen. Amen. He shows you all things. The spirit of the Lord never do things partially. The only way you can walk in the dunami is when you have the spirit of God in action. 